Yo, what's up, YouTube? So today, I want to touch on a subject that is not talked about much on YouTube or any other platform that I've seen. And that subject is homosexuality within the church. Now, I'm a black man, so you can imagine that I spent a lot of time growing up in a black church. Um, but I know that this is not isolated to only the black church. I know it goes on within what we call white churches, Catholic churches, other denominations. You kind of see the same thing. But homosexuality is definitely an elephant in the room that doesn't seem to be talked about very much. Um, it was a subject that I used to hear a lot about about 10 to 15 years ago. But in the recent years, especially um, during the what I call the woke age, where anything you say can literally be used against you. So you have to be very careful. Now, I know that YouTube, I know how they are, especially these days with subjects like this. So I'm going to try to tread lightly and make sure that I try not to offend anyone and try to be as transparent as possible. Um, I'm a very deep thinker. Um, if you guys cannot tell, I, I spend a lot of time thinking and I might spend more than one day on this subject. Um, right now, I'm not sure if I have all my thoughts together. I don't have all my research together, but I just want to kind of start today. So once you watch this video, most likely you're going to be watching something I've been working on for like two to three days. So here we go. If you were to, if you were to be honest with yourself, some of you who grew up in the church, you notice that your pastors, your preachers, your deacons, your clergy, the choir directors, you know, they all have a certain type of mannerism to them that kind of raises a few flags, right? But you don't say anything because you don't want to be disrespectful. You want to look at it through the eyes of God. So you try not to be judgmental. But I know back in the back of your head, you're like, you know, what is going on here? Why is there so much um, homosexual or very flamboyant type men within the church? Like, what is going on here? And it's not just the church neither. You also see it within the gospel industry. There's countless amount of times when you hear stories about gospel singers, especially male gospel singers, who later on come to find out they're gay or at least bisexual at the least. A lot of these men tend to be closeted homosexuals. Now, I don't want to put out any names or anything, you can Google it for yourself. So let me give you the first reason of why I think there's so much homosexuality in the church. So Christianity is a religion that speaks heavily against that type of lifestyle. Correct. So the question is, why does it seem to be so prevalent, especially within the clergy? The people who are in ministry, why are so many of them seem to be engaged in that type of lifestyle? So the first thing I want to say, or the first reason I believe this is, is because of the lack of requirements. And what I mean by that is. It's very easy to become a pastor or a preacher. Well, I'm not going to say easy. I'm, I'm, let me scratch that instead. Anyone can kind of uh, get up and start a church, right? You can go online and become ordained as a minister online. Um, I'm not sure how much it costs, but you know, anyone can just take a test and become an ordained minister online. So it doesn't seem to require a lot of uh, prerequisites to become a Christian minister or preacher or whatever you want to call it. You know, anyone could just kind of get up 
and start calling themselves pastor or minister or prophet or prophetess. You know, I can easily go on YouTube and just type in the name prophet such and such and start preaching, you know? So it doesn't really require any kind of license or anything. So I think that's the first thing, you know? Um, now, of course, if you join a, a church that is already established, I'm pretty sure they have requirements that you have to meet. But once again, the person who started that church in the first place may not have to had um, gone through any type of requirements to be able to do that other than get a 401, uh, what they what they call it, 501C, something like that, whatever it's called, the nonprofit uh, license uh, that you need to run a church. So it's very, um, it, it doesn't require a lot of, um, it doesn't require a lot of requirements, I should say. So you don't really know who's, um, you don't know who's a real minister or, well, I'm not going to say you don't know, but it's, it's one of those things where they didn't have to go through any process to make sure that they're really a minister and what their true intentions are. You know, there's no law that says, oh, you can't be a preacher unless you uh, believe in God. So an atheist, a person who doesn't even believe in God can decide to call themselves a preacher or pastor and start a church if they feel that it's profitable. You understand what I mean? I think that's one of the biggest problems uh, that I see um, at first, at first sight. Um, anyone can just come in and you don't know who this person really is. You don't know their background. Um, but I think that they have learned the game where you have to present a certain image. So it is sort of a hustle in a way. Um, there's definitely a lot of hustlers, religious hustlers. Um, but it's not just Christianity. I think a lot of uh, new age stuff. Um, uh, yeah, a lot of this new age is also hustling. A lot of these people, I, I believe they are as well. So that's why I say it's... Um, it's very, very, um, the, the, the requirements to become a preacher are very loose. So you don't really know who these people are and what they're doing behind closed doors. So you got to be very careful. And if you're a religious person, um, I say that you have to use your discernment. You have to go to God about it and make sure that whatever your spirit is telling you, um, I've definitely come across and experienced some things in church and preachers and ministers that I knew were up there lying. I knew they were being manipulative. I knew that they were playing on people's emotions. And I think that um, I'm, I'm kind of going into my next thing, but I think that this is one of the reasons why there's so many women in the church and not men, because they tend to play on emotions and they tell you things to make you feel good or, you know, a lot of people are dealing with a lot of emotional issues and going to the church has become like a form of therapy, um, which is not totally bad. But when the person you the person who's giving you therapy is manipulating you and taking advantage of you to make a profit, then that's a problem. All right, now, I wanna get into the second thing that comes to mind is attraction. Not the attraction to each other, but the attraction to the church itself. The question is why are, or why does it seem like people who live this alternative lifestyle are attracted to a place that is known for rejecting them. Well, the church has always been a place where so-called sinners go to look for help, look to be saved. 
uh, when a person is living a certain type of lifestyle and they want to change it, whether it's criminal or just, you know, immoral lifestyle, they go to the church to help them make the change, correct? Well, for a lot of people, religion is something that they use to help them become a better version of themselves. So this attracts a lot of people who live lifestyles that weren't the most ethical, probably. Um, so you have a lot of exes within the church, like exes, ex-cons, ex-drug dealers, ex-pimps, ex-prostitutes, um, ex-homosexuals. So these people may not have fully recovered from their past life. They might be in a stage when they're trying to recover or trying to change, but may not have fully made the transition. So this has kind of made it, uh, made the church a place of, of sort of a cesspool where you have all these different people um, together and um, they have the opportunity to meet each other. So if you have a person who's struggling with their sexuality and they go to a place and they meet other people who are also struggling with their sexuality, right? This can open up doors to a few problems. You know, it's not a good idea to probably put a ex-drug dealer and an ex-drug addict in the same place or same environment together when they're both struggling to get out of that um, lifestyle. You understand what I mean? So that might be the second thing is the attraction, the... Um, like I said, the church is a place where sinners go to uh, change their ways, I guess. But the issue is they come in contact with others, people who they um, may have the same tendencies or have some sort of uh, some sort of tendency that will help enable them to um, relapse. Um, in the church, they call it backsliding, where you go back into the sin that you were formerly in, involved in, and now trying to get out of.